the blues is the basis for music. All the genres of music that I listen to, so not the classical things, the jazz, you can find something in that way. But the blues is the basis for myself, just because it's good music. So I came to see a doctor, come on see if you can find something in my satchel that might pacify my mind. Just please, oh, doctor, doctor, why not write me a prescription for the blues? Blues music has shown tremendous leadership and lasting legacy in regards to cultural preservation, social integration, and musical influence in the U.S. The first aspect we'll be looking at is cultural preservation. Blues music is and has been a wonderful means of cultural preservation for the African community. In South Africa, music was played for many different occasions. These events could range from social engagements, work-related activities, religious or ceremonial purposes, and for times of mourning. This very culturally rich music is preserved through the blues. Blues music shares many similarities with traditional South African music. They are rhythmically similar. Blues music practices in South African polyrhythms. Polyrhythms are the simultaneous use of two or more conflicting rhythms. These rhythms mesh together to create one form. This is the backbone of both South African music and the blues. Call and response dominates traditional African music, and this same form can be seen in gospel and blues. Call and response is when the melody of the song is divided between two parts, the leader, or call, and the rest of the musicians, or response. A verse is called and then repeated in the response. This form is repeated multiple times. In addition to call and response, another integral part of South African music is the crush note. A crush note, or blue note, is a principal note and another note a half step higher played simultaneously to add dissonance to harmony. These notes are played in both South African music and blues. Blues music is one of the main reasons we are still able to hear bits and pieces of South African culture in our music today. South African music and tradition was carried on by the singing of folklore in the form of blues when South Africans were captured and sold in slavery. Blues music was sung on the boats that carried the slaves over to the Americas. The slaves were shipped over on the boats, slave traders took their possessions, but they could not take their music. The hardship did not end with the boats. Blues was carried over to the plantations. For blues in the, in the United States, that's uh, our music and where it started, it comes out of an African tradition, and it was begun and formed as a result of, of uh, our enslaving Africans. Um, in that dark part of our history and it was a result of these different African cultures because not everyone was from the same place um, these different cultures coming together and also coming into a culture that was um, the slave owners at that time and the music there and being forced in church <clears throat> and it all kind of melted together and, and ended up becoming the blues While on the plantations, slaves needed an effective form of communication, self-expression, and oral tradition. Thusly, blues music was fully cultivated. Music is colorblind. Blues music led some of the initial instances of racial integration. In earlier times, both black musicians and white musicians would all come together and play these events called medicine shows. The audience was predominantly white, and it simply didn't matter. People didn't care whether you're white or black, they just wanted to hear good music. The first black concert occurred in 1938 at New York's Carnegie Hall. It was organized by jazz critic John Hammond. It was performed for a racially integrated audience and completely sold out. It was considered a socially significant event and a musical milestone. This is just one example of the legacy left by blues music and social integration.
Blues music was a common ground for white and black musicians. Although they differed socially, they respected one another for being great musicians. This is why we see some of the first public and positive interactions between whites and blacks occur on stage. You know, it would be the River Festival. It was interesting for me. I produced River Blues, and I brought in Tommy Castro, who's a great guitar player, who's a white guy. And I brought in Bobby Rush, who's a phenomenal black musician. And I brought them in because nobody, no white people knew who Bobby Rush was. No black people knew who Tommy Castro was. And it worked together on that stage. Blues music acted as a gateway. One example of this can be found in a story told by blues musician Nappy Brown. He told of a blues event where the whites and the blacks were separated by a rope on the dance floor. By the end of the night, the whites had torn down the rope and begun dancing with the blacks. Yes, it acted as a common ground for blacks and whites. But more importantly, blues music humanized African Americans in the eyes of the whites. Blues music allowed blacks to be shed in a light other than slavery. And some whites began to feel humanity. This jump was made more easily with the help of enjoyable blues music. The radio also played a major role in social integration in the music world. In the post-war period, radio began to erode the boundaries between blacks and whites. While you can enforce physical segregation, it was impossible to police what people listened to. It was B.B. King that said, White kids hearing black music on the radio liked it because it sounded good. It felt good. The racists couldn't legislate musical taste. And along with the music, these white kids were hearing the feelings of souls of black people. They were getting to know us, and like us, and to appreciate our talent. Blues music also gave African Americans financial opportunities otherwise unavailable. Paramount Records and OK Records were the first record labels to produce race music. Sunhouse, a popular black blues musician, recorded with Paramount Records. When asked in an interview by Bob West how they treated blues singers at Paramount, he responded, Well, they was very nice, very nice. And they had a separate place to live, and they had an upstairs to it, and we each had one. If he desired to have his own room to himself, he could get it. If cotton was the anvil of slavery, Blue's leadership and legacy became the sledgehammer for change. Blues has heavily influenced the music we hear today. It doesn't matter whether you're listening to country, pop, or rock and roll, you will still be able to pick out bits and pieces of blues. Johnny Cash, Eric Clapton, and even the Black Keys have their musical stylings deeply rooted and influenced by the legacy left by the blues. Blues music is still prominent today. It is very much still alive and plays a role of leadership in what is produced. Popular artists like John Mayer record and put out 12-bar blues shuffles. Even old blues songs are covered by popular bands today to keep the legacy of blues alive from generation to generation. The, the blues, the basic blues, turn into all the early pop music that we have. Um, and I use that term as popular music. So rock and roll, country, R&B, all these forms were basically rooted in the blues. So we can thank the blues for everything we like to hear. Some play the blues because they live them. Others just love them. Either way, a wonderful gift has been bestowed upon us. A blessing born from the harsh and often cruel history of a beleaguered people. The leadership and legacy left by the blues. Baby, don't you want